Hello and welcome back for another VMK in the game development series. In this VMK I'll show you how to create the GUI slider class which will be used to create a slider bar on the GUI interface. With the slider bar we'll be able to specify a minimum and a maximum range that the slider will work on and uh, by sliding a component on the slider we can change the value that the slider represents. The slider has a couple of different features in it where you can set, up, set it up so that it slides horizontally or it slides vertically, similar to uh, scroll bars like uh, here on the window we have a vertical slider and then if I were to reduce this window in size then we would have a horizontal slider as well. Um, you have the ability to define the image that we use here to represent the slider part, so the part that you grab and slide around, as well as the part underneath where the slider bar moves up and down on. So you can define both of these uh, however you like. You can define things like um, whether the slider is going to be a smooth slider or whether the slider is going to have a notched kind of incremental value. So for instance you can set up a slider so that it has discrete states, maybe the numbers between 1 and 10. And as you're sliding that slider it will stick to each incremental integer value. It won't let you select for instance 2.5. Instead you can either select 2 or you can select 3. You can't slide anywhere in between. So we're going to implement all these little features into the slider bar uh, because I found sliders are quite helpful uh, inside of any kind of GUI that you create. Inside of our project here we have our object lib selected and this is where we're dumping in all of the GUI controls that we're creating. Uh, and we're going to repeat this for the GUI slider. So we'll go add new item. We'll select CPP and type in GUI slider. And we'll repeat this for the header file as well. Okay, so starting off with the header file, at the top we have core and GUI control.h. Uh, included and because our slider is going to inherit from GUI control um, we know that we're going to need the GUI control and we're going to be bringing in all the variables that we've defined inside GUI control which I'll open up here. So everything over here is going to be inherited into GUI slider. Our constructor for our slider is going to take in an ID number, a position, a size, an offset, a uh, variable here to determine whether we're horizontal or vertical, a value, so this is the initial value that our slider is set to, a minimum and a maximum range, and the final thing is the step. And this guy here is defaulting to zero, which means it's going to be a smooth slider. However, if we specify a value here, then we can make it so that it notches at a specific step that we specify here. We have a virtual destructor and down here are the functions that we're going to be using. We have a sign texture which uh, we've already seen inside of the button class that allows us to associate a texture image to a certain part of this GUI. Uh, there's going to be three different textures that we can specify for the slider and I'll talk about these in a little bit but basically we have an ID number that we specify in the bottom left, top right and then the slider bottom left, slider top right and we have an image offset and the maximum size. We have a value that's associated with the slider, so anytime we move the slider we can get the value back from the slider as well as we can set the value on the slider to a specific value uh, just to reset it to whatever we like. We need to have check hotspot, stop pressing and render, so these come from our base class which is GUI control. Our member variables, there's a few of them because we need to do a, a little bit of work here to determine where the slider is and what current value there is being stored here. So we have the value, the minimum and the maximum and the step. Those are the values that get passed into the constructor but we also have this fm and fb. The slider is going to be a linear slider which means that depending on the location of the slider point it's going to have to calculate what value should be located uh, at the current location of the slider. And the relationship between the minimum, the maximum, and the current position of the slider is going to determine what is the current value. 
Uh, and that relationship is going to be a linear relationship. And if you want more details on that, go take a look at the math VM case on uh, generating a line. Uh, and you'll see the equations that are inside of this VMK. But basically, we're just using y equals mx plus b. Uh, this is the m value. This is the b value of that equation that will return us uh, the value that we require. We have the horizontal parameter here, and we also have the slider position uh, value here. This slider position is the actual location of the slider bar which we're using to move around on the screen. We have three different textures that we're going to be saving here. Uh, so we have this array here that's going to be saving the bottom left and the top right hand texture coordinates. And these are going to be working in the exact same way that we did uh, the texture coordinates for the button. Uh, and that's it. So let's save this and now go into the C++. This class is going to be a little bit longer because there's a little bit more work than uh, the other classes we've previously created for the GUI, but it's not all that much more difficult. So let's jump right into the constructor here. We have all these parameters we're getting passed in, and after that we need to call the GUI controls um, constructor, and here we're going to pass in GUI underscore slider to tell us that this control is going to be a slider. We're saving the ID number, and we're taking the position and we're going to be saving inside of our member variable. And once again, we're going to be checking the parameters that are getting passed in here for the size to make sure that um, the values are valid. If, if we have a negative size for x or y, then we're, we're going to just set them up to be 0 because negative size doesn't make any sense. Otherwise, we're going to be taking the value that's getting passed in here and just saving it inside of the hotspot size. Um, the position of our slider with respect to the slider bar, so this is the slider button which you can actually go and press and use the mouse cursor on to slide the, the location of the slider. This guy is going to be located uh, using the off hotspot offset, so we're going to take the offset value that gets passed into here and just save it into hotspot offset. The horizontal parameter is saved and then we do a couple checks here for the minimum and the max. We need to make sure that the minimum value is less than the maximum. If it's not, then we're just going to flip them so that the maximum is the minimum and the minimum is the maximum. Otherwise, the minimum value is saved as the minimum and the maximum is saved as the maximum. Just This ensures that later on when we do a bunch of calculations, they're not going to fail on us because min and max have been reversed by the user. We then check to make sure that the slider has some range to move around in. So if the minimum value is equal to the maximum value, then by default what we're going to do is take the minimum value, add 1 to it, and set the maximum value to be this new value. We need to have a slider that can slide, so it cannot slide if the minimum and the maximum are the same value. Then what we do is we check to see if uh, the step size is less than 0. If it is, then we just set it equal to 0 because a negative step size doesn't make any sense. Um, and we do a couple checks here. If the step size is greater than the mi maximum minus the minimum, then the step size will equal to the uh, maximum minus the minimum, which means that the only two values that you can set the slider to is equal to the minimum or the maximum. You cannot slide anywhere in between. However, the step size is less than this difference, then we will be able to step somewhere in between uh, and that will be handled in the code down below. So we just take that step size and save it as this member variable mf step. All right, then we need to calculate the current slider value. And the way we do that is we check to make sure that the value that was passed in is not less than the minimum. If it is, we're just going to set it up to be equal to the minimum because the user said the minimum has to be this value. So if this value is less than the minimum, then, well, we're going to set it equal to be the minimum. The same thing goes with the maximum. If the value that the slider is set to is greater than the maximum value, then we're by default going to set it equal to be the maximum value. Otherwise, the value that the slider is currently at is going to be whatever value the user passed into the constructor. And then we're done. So the constructor does a little bit of checking, a little bit of work to initialize all the states to some valid um, working condition. Our destructor doesn't do anything, so it's blank. Um, then we have our assigned texture. 
again, we need to specify the coordinates for the slider bar and the slider button that is supposed to be rendered. Slider button has two sets of coordinates, one set when the button is highlighted and the other set is when the button is not highlighted. And the third texture that we're using is just for the slider that's located underneath the slider button, which is used to render where the location of the slider uh, is, is located, basically. Here we go, we have all these parameters getting passed in. I've already showed you these guys back inside the header file. Um, first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the pixel, uh, or actually the texture coordinates based on the pixel coordinates that are passed into here. The pixel coordinates are going to range from 0 to the maximum minus 1, with 0, 0 in the top left-hand corner. And the texture coordinates need to range from 0 to 1 with 0, 0 in the bottom left-hand corner. So again, we're going to need to do this conversion where we flip uh, all of our coordinates uh, in the vertical direction so that the 0, 0 is located in the correct position. We're first correct the conversion factor by subtracting 1 from the max. And if this guy is less than or equal to 0, we have an error, so we're just going to return false. Uh, the other thing we check to make sure is that the texture ID value that gets passed in here is actually valid. Um, and then once we have that, we can save it inside of our member variable. What we do is we check to make sure that our ranges for the bottom left and the top right hand corner coordinates are valid. So we do these checks again. We, these are the same checks we did before whenever we had our button uh, texture assigning. Then what we do is we save the size of the slider piece. Um, our slider is going to be ranging from our minimum to our maximum, and it's going to get defined using these uh, top right hand and bottom left hand coordinates. So the horizontal size of the slider is defined by this guy, uh, the, the right size x minus the left size x, and the vertical size of the slider is defined by the bottom's y minus the top's y. We can assign the texture coordinates for the slide bar for the x value as the following. We take the bottom left hand x coordinate and divide it by the size, and then we take the top right hand uh, slider bar's x coordinate to be the top right hand x coordinate divided by the size. Uh, we haven't defined this guy here, so we'll need to update um, I think it was GUI control.h. Yeah, over here. So before we had these four different states, but now we have our sliders, so we're going to add in three new states. We have the slider bar, we have the slider, and we have slider over. So slider bar is basically this section here that's going to be located underneath the slider, and it's not going to change its texture when we move our cursor over top of it or not. Uh, we're going to have the slider, which is the part that we can grab and move around, but we will give the option to highlight this or change it to whatever we like by using the slider over um, variable. So those are the f three textures that we're going to be working with. Going back in here, so we're defining our slider bar's x value for the bottom left and the top right hand coordinate as so, and then the y value for the bottom left and top right hand coordinate we need to flip it, so we take the size minus the y value, and then we take the size minus the y value for the top right hand corner coordinate, and then we also have to divide it by f size to normalize it to be between 0 and 1. So this will assign the texture coordinates for a slider bar. Then we have our slider. This is the part that's going to be visible whenever our cursor is not over top of our object. So we're taking the slide uh, bottom left hand x, dividing it by uh, the size, and so on. And then we have the y coordinates, which again we have to flip. So we're taking the f size and we're subtracting whatever gets passed into our function. The last part is the slider over, and this guy is the, the part of the image that's going to represent what the slider button here is going to look like when we're putting our cursor over top of it. So we're going to take um, this thing here, which is calculated up above, and we're going to move it by an offset. And the offset is defined uh, inside of uh, this function call. So we can take this guys uh, and adjust it by the offset value. And uh, finally, 
we need to calculate the M and B values for the slider motion now that we know how big the slider button is. So the way we do this is depending on if it's horizontal or vertical we're going to have a little bit of a different equation. Similar math but just different variables. So the M value from Y equals MX plus B can be solved by, by the following formula. We take the hot size X minus two times the uh, hot spot offset X and then divided by the maximum divided by the minimum. If the uh, M value is less than zero then the offset is too large which will then return false so there's something wrong with the calculation. If we're in the horizontal direction we can do the similar kind of math where we're calculating M by taking the Y values here and we're dividing it by max minus min. Again, if this value is less than zero, then the offset is too large, so we're just going to return false. Once we have the M value, we can plug in uh, the M value into Y equals MX plus B, where this time we're solving for B, and we can see that minus M times the minimum value is going to give us the B value. And once we have this, we can go and update the slider value and position by calling set value. This is one of our function calls that is going to be defined here uh, within our uh, GUI slider class. So after we do all that we then return true to say that this texture has been assigned accordingly. Uh, to get a value from the slider we just call get value and it's going to return our m underscore f value and setting the value is done by passing in the value into here and what this is going to do is set the value on the slider corrected to the nearest step size, if we are using a step size. If it's a continuous slider, then there is no approximation, so it's just going to return to us the exact value that gets calculated. What we do is we check to see if this value is less than or equal to the minimum. If it is, it's just clamped to the minimum. Same thing goes with the maximum. If it's greater than the maximum, we clamp it to the maximum. Otherwise, we're just going to take the value that gets passed in here and save it into our member variable. If we do have a step size, we need to do a couple adjustments. And the adjustments that we do here is a little bit of math, but really not that difficult to understand. We take the value, we subtract it from the minimum, and then we take that adjusted value and divide it by the step size. This gives us how many incremental steps we need to make from the minimum uh, location. So then what we do is we take the adjusted guy, we're subtracting the number of steps times the step size, and if this guy is greater than half a step, we're going to offset it by one step. What this means is, um, let me go into PageShop Pro and demonstrate this. I think it would be a lot easier to demonstrate visually rather than verbally. Okay, let's say we have a slider that has some discrete states. And let's say this is value 3, value 4, value 5, and value 6. So we've defined our minimum to be 3, our maximum to be 6, and our step size to be 1. If we go and say we want to place the slider button right here, somewhere between 4 and 5, what we do is we calculate to see what is this value here. And just by the way I've drawn this, we can see maybe this is 4 point, I don't know, 4. Well, 4.4 is not greater than halfway between this guy and this guy, which would be 4.5. So because of this, what we're going to do is round down to be located here at 4. If this slider bar happened to land over here, past the halfway point between 4 and 5, then we're just going to take the value and move it up to number 5. So that's basically the math that uh, takes care of all this work. We get the number of steps that we need to move based on the value minus the minimum. We then calculate to see exactly what is the value and if it's greater than the half the step size, again remember the step size here is the location from here to here and for this case here it's set up to 1. So we're checking to see if the value is greater than uh, 1 divided by 2 which is a half which is this midpoint here. So if this value here is greater than that offset, then we're going to increment the number of steps so that we're landing in on the next guy. Once we know exactly how many steps there are going to be, we can then take the minimum plus the number of steps, and this will give us the value of the slider in our certain scenario. If we are not using uh, step size, 
then what we can do is just apply our y equals mx plus b equation to get the slider position. And uh, after we do that, then our slider will uh, be located in the appropriate location visually, uh, and the value will be already calculated for us, so we don't need to do any other work. Check hotspot takes in our mouse position and our pressed variable here. And what we do is we check to see if the mouse is actually over top of our hotspot. If it is, we set our over value to be true and our return value to be whatever our ID number is. Otherwise, our over is set to false. If our over is true and we're pressing, then we're going to toggle the button state. And this thing here is very important um, because the way that the slider is programmed right now is you can press on the slider button to move it back and forth. However, when you release the mouse button, it's going to re release uh, the sort of grab effect. Like you'll notice here, I can press on the slider bar, and as I move back and forth, um, I'm sliding. But as soon as I let go of the button, we're no longer sliding. If you don't want that behavior, if you want like click to activate the slider, and then as you're moving, you're moving it, and then you need to click on it again to deactivate it, you can do that. Um, and that's what I've shown here is. I've commented this code out, but basically, button does not stay pressed when the cursor is not over top of the control. Oh, sorry, this is a different functionality. Um, what this will here do is, if you take your mouse cursor and move it off of uh, this button, then the slider functionality will no longer work. But you can see in Windows, by default, when you're click and select this guy, I can move my cursor away from the actual button and I can continue sliding. I don't have to keep it on top of that slider button. So uh, in our code, if you want um, this behavior here, then just uncomment this and it'll make our press value go to false as soon as we move our cursor off of the hotspot. It really depends on your preferences and how you want the slider functionality to work, but that's that's why this code here is, is commented out. All right, finally, we need to update the value if the um, control is pressed. So if it's pressed, we take the mouse, and we're going to check to see if we're horizontal or vertical, because our calculation is going to be different dependingly. And what we're doing is we're taking the horizontal value, because we're horizontal here on the slider. So we're taking the mouse's x, minus the position in X, minus the hotspot offset. We're taking this value and we're checking to make sure if it's less than or equal to zero. If it is, then we know we've moved beyond our minimum value, so we're just going to set it up to be equal to the minimum. We do the same sort of check to see if this guy here is greater than the hotspot size. If that's the case, we're going to set it up to be the maximum. Otherwise, we can calculate precisely um, the value here by taking the mouse position minus a b divided by m. So this is uh, y equals mx plus b being solved for the value that we need. And if we're uh, working in the vertical direction, then we have the same thing, but we're working with the y coordinates here. Uh, and after doing all these calculations here, uh, we'll then go and set the value of our slider by calling set value, and then we return the ID. So anytime we're over top of the hotspot and we're moving anything around, all of this calculation is going to determine what is the current value of our slider and whereabouts to position everything so that when we do render it, everything will be the correct value with the correct states set up for us. We need to add the stop pressed state action so that when we release the mouse button, we can then go and select to uh, turn this pressed variable off. If you don't want to have this uh, functionality, you can go back up here and enable this part here, but uh, you'll notice that if you do this, it's kind of difficult to work with the sliders. I guess it really depends on the shape and size of your sliders. If you have small sliders, I would recommend that you do not comment this out because keeping your mouse cursor sort of in line with the shape of your slider is sometimes difficult. However, if your sliders are big and you're not worried about moving your cursor off of these slider bars, then you could comment this out and you can actually omit this whole stop pressing function altogether. You won't need it.
The final function is our render, which uh, we call to render our slider to the screen. So what we do is we check to see if our texture ID number is valid. We then set up to use our model view matrix by setting it up to be the identity matrix. We enable textures, and we set up to be using our texture that we specify. We set color to be white, and then we begin drawing a quad. We have our texture coordinates already saved inside of our member variables, so we can just extract them, the x's and the y coordinates. And then we need to have our coordinates, our vertex coordinates for our quad, and we can grab them out of the position uh, and using the hotspot size. So we have position x, position y, position x with the hotspot, position y, and so on. So again, we're rendering them in the same order we've done before. Bottom left, bottom right, top right, and then uh, top left. That's the order that we're doing all the rendering calls here. After we render the slider background bar, we then render the movable slider piece. And the order of this matters because we want the slider piece to be on top of the background rather than the other way around. So first thing we do is we check to see whether uh, we are currently over top of our slider. If we are, then we set up this texture ID value to be slider over. Otherwise, we're setting it up to be GUI text underscore slider. If we're rendering horizontally, we're going to take these coordinates. Otherwise, we're going to take these guys here. And we specify that the slider that we're going to be moving is going to be centered about the current value of our slider. So we're going to be offsetting it to the left and to the right by the size divided by 2. So in other words, uh, let me go back here into PaintShop Pro. Let's say our slider is something like this. Well, our value is going to be located right here in the middle. And what we're going to do is we're going to move half of the width of our slider to get this coordinate. And then we're going to move half the width to this direction to get this uh, coordinate. So we know where this part here is in the middle because that's our value. And we know the size of our slider bar because that's one of our parameters. So we can just take the size of this divided by 2 to get this coordinate and this coordinate and so on. And we can get these ones as well. So going back in here, this is our size here, which is half of our uh, y value or half of our x, depending on which way we're looking, horizontally or vertically. And then we have our texture coordinates, x and y. And finally, our vertex coordinates, which are coming from the position, the hotspot offset, the slider position, and then the size. Those give us all the coordinates that we need for the x and the y position of our slider. And here's the y coordinates for the position, the hotspot offset, and then our size y. Okay, and then finally at the end we just call gln and then gl disable to disable our textures. So it is a little bit more complex. There is a, a fair bit of math in here to, to get our slider up and running. But again, the math is not all that difficult. It's just linear y equals mx plus b equations. Um, the only really tricky part is uh, understanding how this set value works because there are two, two linear um, relationships. There's this one up here, and then there's the other one which is inside a set value right here. But if you go through it and write it out on paper, you should be able to see where these equations are coming from, y equals mx plus b, and how it is that I'm using these guys to get the precise values. If you're not interested, don't even bother. Um, give you a headache, it gave me a headache uh, getting this up and running, but just type it out as you see it in the video and your slider will work. So there you go. Uh, come back for the next VMK where I'll be using this GUI slider to get our slider rendering on the screen and I'll show you how we can use it to um, add textures to it and get uh, our slider highlighting and things like that.